you very much, Jason. So it's my pleasure to be here, and uh, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me here. So uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, the anti-hardness of nuclear norm for tensors, and uh, most of the results that I present here are joint work with Le Lech Hangley, who sits here. Let's see. Let's, let's see. Okay. So. Uh, I don't have 100 slides like last evening. I have only 23 with references, so I better go slow, right? It's okay. It's just, you know, it's, you were very energetic. It was in binary. <laughs> okay, so, so first uh, we'll just talk a little bit about norms and spectral nuclear norms for matrices and tensors. So uh, matrices I sort of, the starting point, everybody knows matrices, and I always say, I paraphrase Max Noether, to say that matrices were created by God and tensors by devil. So, <laughs> but so, so that's, but we'll do that too. So then we'll talk, it's not in this order, but weak membership and weak validity problems, unit ball of norms. So this is very general and it's a very nice, uh, relatively simple results. I think it's new because maybe nobody was thinking about this stuff, but you know, one never knows. So then we talk approximation of norms. So NP hardness of tensor and nuclear norms. Then uh, Banach theorem on symmetric tensors and this generalization to p partite symmetric density matrices. So this, this part sort of a work uh, in progress. So, uh, I mean, somebody told me you have to have too, much, too many equations on one slide. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. well, three slides, but, they're, they're quite <laughs> but it's, it's they're all trivial, but I'll explain. <laughs> okay, so so essentially we are working with two fields, complex and reals, and so F M is I just usually as a matrix person I use it as a column space of uh, a column space of vectors. <coughs> So nu is a norm if, first of all, for on every non-zero vector is positive, and it's, it's sub-additive, and it's homogeneous, right? So we denote by B nu, this is going to be the unit, closed unit ball in this norm, and S nu, which I hardly use, would be the sphere. So it's all vectors of norm one. Now. In this uh, uh, talk, it's very important to talk about, talk about the dual norm. Now, I'm using, I can use only complex numbers, but then if everything is real, then Y star is just Y transpose. But if it's over complex, so Y star is transpose and bar, okay? So, new, so the dual norm is just the maximum of the real part of Y star X when y is over b nu. So because uh, I can multiply by, by, by phase, as we say, or for reals plus minus one, you can assume that it's already absolute value. Now, sometimes our norm is going to be given by the maximum of the real y star x on some, so, okay, maybe, so, so if I look at the b nu, it's a, uh, uh, Everything is finite dimension, it's a compact uh, convex set, so it has extre extreme points, and so therefore this maximum is just maximum on the extreme points. So next, so if I, because we are finite dimensional, if I take dual of the dual, I'll get the norm. So for those of us who are not used to thinking about norms, what's the kind of reason you use both norm and dual norm? Because we want to see, because uh, it would be explained later. But why not to uh, why not to answer your question? So, for example, uh, Lekhang showed uh, uh, together with Hiller that uh, spec uh, the spectral norm is NP hard. Now we are interested in do in the in the nuclear norm, which is a dual of that. That's the reason. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, so so on the other hand, if I know that nu x is the maximum of the this y star x when y in some set S and a, a, and S is non 
compact balance set. So essentially, then, if I know this, then essentially, I could say that the, the dual, the ball of the dual norm in the convex, convex of, of S. Now, uh, I mean, the basic thing that one works over real or complex number is Euclidean norm, so just x star x, it's self-dual. And uh, in, because of complexity, sort of, we always will use this BXR, so it would be a closed ball of radius R uh, centered at x. But the ball is going to be just a Euclidean ball. So, <coughs> just to remind you that we have other norms which are close to Euclidean norms, xp norms. So the, the most important norms are the Euclidean norm, p equals 2, the maximal norm, p equals infinity, and L1 norm, which is p1. Okay. So, so now let's uh, remind ourselves what happens with, with the spectral and nuclear norm for matrices. So f of n is space of n by n matrices. So on this space, we can also define just an inner product. It would be trace A star B. And then we have what we call the Frobenius norm. So this is the uh, square root of sum of the absolute value squares of all uh, entries. So the operator norm is denoted like that, is, uh, is going to be uh, <coughs> the maximum of the a norm of Ax when x less equals than 1. Now, if I look at all matrices of rank 1, uv star, such that there any of these norms, their Euclidean, their Frobenius norm, or this norm is 1, so this is a compact balance set, and so therefore, the, you can also, I think most of the people know that if I take maximum of the trace of A V U star, which is the same as U star A V, in that this will give you a norm. So, so if so, in other words, just it already. If you look what I did before, it tells me that if I take on con the convex hull of this matrices, it actually it will spend the unit ball in the dual norm and the dual norm to to this uh, the dual norm to spectral norm is a, the nuclear norm. But anyway you will see it also from the from here later. So the SVD decomposition, so it means that uh, you just take uh, act from left and from right by unitary matrices or orthogonal if you wish and then uh, and then you bring it to a diagonal form. This matrix doesn't have to be square. But the other sort of more natural way to say that it's a singular value decomposition is just A is a, a combination or linear combination of this UIVI star. So they are here, these matrices. And the uh, sigma is are non negative. And this UI and the and so u1 up to un and v1 up to vm, the, or vr actually are orthonormal. Okay, so the nuclear norm is just the, in this, the, if you don't just do anything without any sort of thought, it's a, well, the sum of singular values. So a, the a is a square of the, of Robinus norm, just square, it's sort of the L2 with respect to sigma. And the maximum norm is just would be A. Okay. So, so uh, the most important thing here from linear algebra is that if A is real valued, and I will take all these, all these norms over complex numbers, it won't get bigger. It's the same one because of this decomposition. Now, how about the complexity? So, the complexity of the norm is OMN. And uh, the complexity of A1 is just you multiply by minimum because so to find this is sort of you do truncated whatever Lanchos algorithm or some other stuff. So, so why actually, why mess with uh, L1 norm? Well, the importance is sort of when you, you want to do, let's say, some problems, uh, let's say, some problems, one of them is like the Netflix problem. So they would like to guess 
your test with very few data. So the right way, so the right way to do it is to minimize the, the nuclear norm. And this is still a convex programming. And so, so in, uh, in other instances also, you I mean, instead of, you do L1 norm. So this is well understood. And uh, that's why it's important in applications. Okay. So, so now just I want to remind you, so, uh, so then I want, oh, pop, 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 that's too much. <coughs> okay, so what I want to do is just to remind you that uh, the, uh, so if I take the nuclear, the, the nuclear ball of the unit ball of the nuclear norm in this space, so this is it. So you see, so essentially when you write A, you assume that uh, the norm is positive or one. So you see that, you see right away, if I write in this way, or these are non-negative numbers sum to one. So this is, so this is another way to say that the set extreme point of B nuclear is exactly omega mf, this, this set of U, I, V, J. And now the, and now there is this, uh, Sorry, I forget what omega mn is. Oh, uh, you forget what? What omega mn is. Oh, okay, so let me just write it down. Oh. Okay, so we write it down, so it's, uh, okay, omega m n f is going to be the set of all matrices u v star when u in f m and v in f n. Okay? And the norm is one. Yes, and you are right. Thank you. <laughs> you <laughs> yes. Segre intersected the Euclidean ball. Okay, it, now it's clear, right? Right. Okay. So, uh, so this is. Uh, so now, uh, okay. So, uh, so the so one important sort of trivial observation you would never do it for matrices is to observe that if you take any decomposition of your matrix as a sum of rank one matrices and you take then you will take the sum of each uh, norm of each factor and this is norm of this one is norm of this one then it's always upper bound for the norm so therefore if you take the minimum or infimum it will be the norm one because you have you have the singular value decomposition okay so so i gave a proof but uh, now i'm starting to see that i may be too slow <laughs> but it's okay so 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 this so so now let me show you a sort of stupid method to try to compute uh, the nuclear norm for matrices because we have this much better way because of singular values but but when we go to tensors we don't have that but this method is valuable so this method is usually what we call alternating maximum matter or alternatingly square what you do you say okay so I fix y1 up to yn in general position it means that all of them are non-zero and any maximum number fn is linearly independent and uh, and then and n is big enough so using let's say Kara Theodore so n should be at least mn or m times n plus one so I can always represent I fix these vectors now always represent a as sum of xi and now I will, out of all this representation that you can view as a matrix you will find the minimum of this norm so this is fixed but this is varies and so this is again convex minimization so you can do it for x now when you did it for x you fix now x and do it for y and you switch it like that and you every time you go you improve you improve this minimum and usually it will converge usually to a stationary point and uh, it would be local minimum if you are lucky most of the time and so this is a way to try to find out the uh, compute 
uh, nuclear norm without singular value decomposition. And then we'll try to do it from te for tensors. Okay, so now we are done. I told you everything I know about matrices that I need. Now we are going to tensors. So the tensors, so just, P, I'm not sure if I use this notation, but M is just M1 up to MD, MD and we take this uh, bracket of M, it would be just all integers from 1 to M. Now if we have J, from if we have D, so because I have in mind uh, D mod tensor, so J subset of that. So uh, now we as a tensor, we just tensor the spaces, and uh, f as in matrices, we can denote it like that or denote by that. Now just we need some piece of notation, which I'm not sure if I use that much, but anyway, we want we want to contract one tensor with the other one, and this tensor doesn't have to be the same uh, D mode, but it has to, it has to be K mode. But uh, this J1 up to JK are sub indices of that. So the contraction just would be just you sum on the all indices here. So in other words, you kill all the indices which are in X here. So for example, if you have tau is D mode tensor, and uh, and uh, so you want to take this rank one tensor, but you omit at k, and you take this, you contract that, this is going to be a vector or in uh, fmk. And uh, so this is the summation. Now, you see the difference between matrices and tensors, so this is called Hilbert-Schmidt norm. It's, it's all history. And this is an inner product. So you can have uh, some people, of course, abuse notation. Frobenius and Hilbert-Schmidt are identical, but it's not exactly so so now let's just essentially first let's go to three tensor nuclear spectral norms three tensors so what we have now we have here omega m n l f so now it would be it would be if you want as a segre product of or it would be rank one tensor but each so but the product of them equals one you can assume that each one is normalized to be of norm one, but of course you still have good <coughs> choice with the faces. And so the spectral norm it just would be maximum of the real part <coughs> of of this ratio, or maximum of absolute value of the real or real part when this varies on omega M and L F. So this is spectral norm. And the dual and the nuclear norm is just uh, as in matrices would be just the minimum of this product. When you, you take any representation of A as a sum of rank one matrices and you sum the sort of the norm of each factor, that's the same, and you want it minimal. So again, so from what I explained before, because of this formula, you see that each the spectral and the dual and the nuclear norm are dual each other. And the extreme points of the of the spectral norm are exactly this set of matrices. So can I ask you, since sure. like you switched the definitions on omega, first it was a product of two balls, and now it's a product such that they live in the, the ending point lives in a huge sphere. So, so because this is tensors and this is matrices. So, uh, so what's not clear? So in the matrix case, you said norm of u equals norm of v equals 1. Yeah, it's the same. The yeah, it's the same. It's the same. You can always renormalize that. It really doesn't matter. Because if the product is 1, you can fix it. It's, it's the same. OK? <laughs> you are right. So it's, it's the same definition, there, but uh, I should be more consistent. But it's the same. OK? Thanks. So, uh, so, so the starting point is at hiller lim So the spectral norm is NP hard to compute. Now, what we want to show is that the nuclear norm is NP hard to compute. And also we want to give a reason why actually we are interested in nuclear norm so of the tensor. So one way you can say, well, you can also start try to complete entries in tensor, not in, in matrices. And uh, probably like in matrices, it's the right norm to use. This would be the nuclear norm. Now. So, so here is sort of problem that I think we already know the answer. So if you take a real tensor and you take it, view it as, as a spectral norm over R and over C, is there, you usually they shouldn't be the same. So in other words, if you take even real tensor but go to complex, you, you will increase the norm. But if A is non-negative, 
then it's very easy to show and I will convince you that here you have equality. That's easy. Now, let's go next. <coughs> so, uh, okay. So, so I think that I'm slightly a little bit okay. I'm uh, repeat some definitions. So this is my mind notation for the product of the mode tensors. This is the ball, and this is the unit ball. I discussed that, and so so now I just re rewrite what is the spectral norm and what is the what is the nuclear norm, and I saw that they are duals, and uh, so. Uh, so I'm not sure. So just to drop this C, so if I don't draw any field, this would be over complex numbers. So uh, so obviously, the, since the complex now as the complex numbers are bigger, if you take this real, you're going to increase uh, and uh, the norms. Uh, so. Uh, <coughs> So here, so the claim is that so if you replace A by A, non-negative, this is if you do just triangle inequality, you will obtain that, the, that if you take here non-negative tensor, it absolute value, it you will increase the norm. So this is again trivial. Maybe I have even a proof or something. It just, it, it just follows from the fact that, okay, so A, let's say A, Sigma, say in F, it doesn't matter, okay, sigma. So this is what's that? It's maximum on, you have the tri, tri form, sigma, okay, without, let's see. So you have A, and you have, a, okay, so maybe it's better to do with this sigma X, X, uh, <coughs> but then you don't see it. So it would suppose it's a i j k is three, and this is will be x i y j z k, and you have this one. This so this is uh, this is uh, so this is exactly uh, this part when I write it in full. But now if I take inequality sigma. And now this, the absolute value of vectors x, y, and z, they still satisfy, they still satisfy the same conditions as before. In other words, they are in omega, and so therefore you, <laughs> okay, and therefore you have uh, this inequality. Okay, where the, this was. So so this is works just in matrices, like in matrices now. However, when you go to nuclear norm, it's not true anymore that so this is in, you have inequality. This so so in other words, when you replace this by a nuclear norm, this is not true, and it's not true even for matrices. Okay, so okay, so that's so so now. <coughs> So one way, again. so how would you find the, the, how would you find naively the spectral norm? Well, you just uh, over reals or over complex, you just do, again, alternating method. In other words, you fix all x's variable except of one, and then take maximum, this is trivial, because of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, so you know which one vector to take the next one, and you alternate that. And, uh, and you can do some stuff. So this is well known, but in this paper that I have with my students, so we have slightly, not rank one, but, uh, but what's called the R1 RK approximation. But anyway, so, but how about the trying to, to do the same method for, spec, for nuclear norm? Because this was for, so this, this method was for, for spectral norms. So you can try to do the same thing that I discussed before, but we, nobody did yet, I mean, uh, don't, that I know of, didn't yet any simulation. So again, you just, what you do, you just keep all variables x's except one fixed, and then you put these linear conditions, and you find to try and minimize that, 
and then you change the variables, alternate. Okay. So so now we go to the to four tensors and and bipartite density matrices. So you want to to go to do something to do in uh, quantum mechanics. So. So we have, so C M by M is just M by M complex valued matrices. H M by M is our Hermitian. H M M is uh, uh, positive definite, which means uh, positive semi-definite. And this one, oh, positive semi-definite with trace one. So those matrices are called density matrix. matrix and uh, uh, let's say quantum <coughs> system, finite quantum system represented by a density matrix. And the reason is very simple. You want eigenvalues of the matrices be the probabilities to be in the state. So, so they have to be non-negative and some one. Okay. Now, now we want to to take. So we have Alice and Bob. Okay. So we want to take bipartite system. So we have two matrices. And we want to take a Kronecker product. If you want to take Kronecker product, this would be a matrix like that. This is entries like that. Now. If we, so the, we have here now four indices, the indices of my ij, and this k, and actually these are arranged in lexicographical order of, the, of things like that. But we also can view this creature as a four tensor. So we have sort of identification or isomorphism between these tensors and products of these <laughs> tensors. So now, here is a piece of notation. So we, we start with, uh, uh, let's say, <coughs> with the t four by f four tensor, which we have M, M, and N, N the same. So it's called bisymmetric if we see if the matrix, this matrix C is symmetric in this one. So in other words, if we shift these two indices in front, then it is symmetric. So uh, if we call it by Hermitian, if we shift these two indices to front, then we have to take bar. And you call it positive definite if this matrix is Hermitian and positive semi-definite. So bipartite density matrix is, would be just, it would be matrix living here, but with M times N. And uh, so, so, this is, so this is a bipartite density matrix that we have two persons, Alice and Bob, and uh, they are sort of interacting between themselves. Okay, so something happens. Okay, so now, so so now, the most exciting thing in uh, quantum mechanics, which is now is the entanglement. So you want to do, you want to make more information. It has to be entangled. So what is not entangled? So those are separable states. So what is separable states? So in other words, roughly speaking, Alice does something, Bob does something, and that's it. And they don't, they don't do anything together. So mathematically, if Alice just takes, produces one, what's called the pure state, it would be XX star, and Bob like that. So this is so. In quantum mechanics, when you have two systems they interact, it must be a tensor product. So this is what this. So so then, essentially, if you think carefully, this if you take convex combination of that, this means essentially that you have several possibilities with several probabilities. So this is separable states. So separable states are sort of not interesting because everybody works itself. There is no entanglement. There isn't this spooky. Uh, let's say whatever Einstein, uh, Podolsky, and uh, Rosen, I think, uh, effect. Okay, so so now you want to characterize the uh, let's say the separable states, and uh, you want to show maybe just that your state is not separable. Okay, so so let's look any tensor like that. We can define a trace, and trace would be. Very simple. It just would be trace of the of the matrix, sort of like which corresponds to that. In other words, you start, you take i equals j and k equals that's the trace. Now, the, if you have a rank one tensor, then the trace would be this one. And so it's obvious you have 
Okay, I forgot here our absolute value. This, you have always this inequality, if it's for real or complex one. So therefore, we have this simple and nice theorem that trace of A is less equal than the nuclear norm. And equality holds if and only if A is a, a scalar of bipartite, of, of a separable state. So uh, let's see if I give a proof of that. I can. Okay, so, no. so let's, let's maybe, since this is very simple and important, then I could give a proof here. So, let's see. Now I will have to start a little bit to go faster, but this is a more simplex. So, what you say, okay, so let's assume that this is my the composition of A already is a minimal decomposition with respect to the nuclear norm. So xi, y, let's say y, okay, y, y, i, zi, and wi. So the trace of that, so the trace of that in absolute value would be less equal than the sum of xi times yi times zi and times wi. Now equality, because this is the trace, trace is actually, you see, because of this fact here, when this absolute value of x, let's say absolute value of x3 transposed x1, when is this equals to x3 x1? Well, because of Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, they must be essentially one parallel to the other one, and I have star. And so that's, 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 that's the proof, okay? So, so, so here we have a, so we have a cor simple corollary that the bipartite density metric is separable if and only if its nuclear norm is one, because trace of a separable is one. And it's a nuclear norm must be a greater or equal, so and equality only if and if it's by, by so it's only if and if and only if it's separable. So this is very nice. So you see why nuclear norm is important. <coughs> However, life is not simple because Gurvich shows that even weak membership of SMN is NP hard. So therefore, weak membership is the unit ball of the of this creature is also NP hard because I cannot decide polynomial, well, I cannot decide easily or polynomially that, uh, that it is separable or not. So now, what in uh, our joint work with uh, Alec Hang, we show that, that weak membership is also NP hard. So this implies automatically that the membership is NP hard. Sure. So these NP hardness results are over which model? Because since you are talking about complex matrices, the natural model might be the VSS model. That's you know. Now you now you are killing me. I assume that it's uh, so. We will see. So this mo So what I will show in a few slides that essentially this problem is equivalent. First of all, that to the click number. Click number. You will agree there is no need to model, right? If I give you give you a graph and you decide. If you can decide the click number, is that NP complete? Okay. Click number, yeah. So that's so so. So that means for me that's I mean that's so so for me I mean uh, that's uh, for me the way I see it because I'm not computer science. Go ahead. Why don't you answer? Yes. Oh, what's okay? So what's that, did the reduction come out as rational numbers? Yeah. That would answer his question. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's the cook cup leaven model. It's uh, Turing machine, the classical model, because uh, ultimately our input is going to be a rational number, so it doesn't matter. In fact, integers. So it's not real numbers. The computation. For are... instance, not in the BSS model. Sorry. No, not not in the BSS. Model. Okay. We, we'll see. So let's see. So. So, so, so this is just, so this is, as I said, maybe this answer your question, that click, if, if I can compute a spectral norm of special four tensors, it is exactly equivalent to computing the click number of a graph, okay? So let's see that. 
So, so let's start. So we have a graph on n vertices, and a g is 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 an adjacency matrix, and kappa g, uh, uh, no, kappa g, a g is adjacency matrix, kappa g is click number. So there is a very nice and simple result of what Strassen says that if you take this maximum of just <coughs> quadratic form when x is a probability vector, so all possible probability matrices, exactly 1 minus 1 over kappa g. Okay? So, so therefore, it's NP-hard to approximate this kappa g up to an order 1 over n squared because, because kappa g is an integer. So, so what we showed is that if we have, so this if you show that, it, that g induces a special for non-negative symmetric positive definite tensor. And so whose spectral norm is this, this number. So therefore, the spectral norm is then hard to approximate within arbitrary delta. Okay. So this is sort of, we reprove the result of Hiller and Lim, but in slightly different setting. So now we'll show that, that this is equivalent to NP-hardness of the weak membership of the unit well the spectral norm. Yes? So, so, by the way, the PCP theory will give you the approximate complexity for Greek number much better than a ratio like that. You can, you can prove that. That's right, but, but I, need, I need this maximum because I want to go to the spectral norm. You know what I'm saying is yes. the corollary of the oh. 65 is being yes. superseded by... The, the, so the corollary was... So can much, you... Much stronger statement. Yes, yeah, I mean that's... That's okay. For me, it's that's good enough. But it says that the, you are you are much stronger color from that, right? Okay. So, so, so this is sort of the, the let's say the heart of the argument. So, so we want to show if once we show that this this maximum is essentially a spectral norm of certain tensor, and actually this tensor you can view it also as a just by multiplication as a bipartite state. So, so, that's, so that gives us that this is NP-hard. Now, so, but this is that sort of we, can, we already know from uh, Hiller and Lim. But now we want to show, so, so, so this we want to show, this is equivalent number one to weak membership if in the spectral norm. And once we know that, then we is a, then we will show, okay, and once we, we know that, then we go, we go and show that that the weak membership in the norm, polynomial, if and only if, it's polynomial in the dual norm. And that is so, and that's what, and this is very general, and that's, and that's essentially gives us everything we want. Okay, so now I need to increase my pace. Five or ten minutes. Yeah. I think I have 10 minutes, okay. But anyway, but I have more slides. Okay, only 11. Okay, so let's see. So, okay, so, so every, in the Rn, all the norms are equivalent. So you can put there this constant. You see that this k nu and k nu r. So every, every norm is between capital k nu x times and small k nu x. So, so essentially, and you can assume those are rational numbers. And such and sort of the complexity of this B nu from this point is the number of digits that we need to encode these two K nu and K nu. So for, now I'm going to go a little bit faster. So it's easy to show that first of all, this is trivial, that the spectral norm less equal than, than the Hilbert-Schmidt norm. That's trivial because it's just a part of that. But also you have this inequality, which is sort of, it's, uh, it just comes uh, very easy, but I won't dwell on that. So, you, so, so in other words, in, in f using for the spectral norm, then, you, then uh, the complexity of the ball is just essentially the number of digits as a product of the dimension. Now, for any epsilon positive, we, and you have any convex set or uh, any set. So S B nu epsilon is a closed epsilon neighborhood of, uh, of B nu. So this is something like that. Here is my set. And then you take balls around it with epsilon. So this set is general set or B nu. But the balls are always in R2. So this is, this is the sort of the thickening of the set 
This is the thickening of the set of B by epsilon. But there is also a sort of a smaller set, which is B minus epsilon. So you take essentially the smaller set would be what if left if you take you take this cover of the boundary and what's inside. So this everything black. Okay, so this one is S B let's say nu minus epsilon. This is the red one and everything bigger one is the bigger one is S B nu and epsilon. Okay? So next so so this is so so what what Okay. Next. Okay. So so now we go to this uh, standard thing that's called weak membership and validity problem. So weak membership is uh, okay. Maybe I did it here. So okay. Let's see. Uh, so first of all, what is a membership problem? You determine if y is in B new or not B new. What is a weak membership problem? So this is weak membership, weak membership problems goes as follows. Either determines that this is that your y is a slightly bigger set, b plus epsilon, or or it's outside the smaller set. So because it's approximation. And the weak validity problem is sort of if you have if you have the city is a hyperplane which is given by uh, rational uh, numbers and gamma and epsilon. Is there everything? Is there every set in the smaller in the smaller set in the red set is separated by gamma plus epsilon, or you know it's this, or you have some point in a bigger set which is greater or equal that. So the basic results that we use, it's Yudin and Mirovsky that if there exists deterministic algorithm solving the weak membership problem for B nu y and delta in polynomial time. Then there is a deterministic pro algorithm solving weak validity problem in this type. Okay. So essentially, we are following the, the arguments of uh, Gurwitz. So, so for, for compact uh, K, R, N, and F and C, R, so set M, K, C would be the maximum of all X in K of C, T, X. So new X is this maximum over the dual norm. And if you take the dual norm, then then the dual norm, okay, so maybe it's not clear, but let's see. So this So the the basic identity is new x, it's k u x less equals and so this is the standard norm and less and greater equals than k u x. Now if you take new dual of x, v, we just change it. It would be less equal 1 over k mu x and greater equal 1 over k x. Okay. So this is all trivialities. But anyway, so, so, so now uh, if we do correct, so if we take all these arguments, and uh, so what is the problem? The problem is that b nu is a norm, but small b here is when you do delta, you measure it with respect to the standard Euclidean norm. So you have to compare. So therefore, you have this, let's say, containments. The sig ball is less equal of b nu delta is less equal than b nu with a factor 1 plus k nu and contained here. And the same if you want b nu minus delta, but you have to assume this assumption, there are these containments. And so you, and from this you deduce these inequalities. Okay, so the, the, let's say the technicality is right now so important. So the, now we deduce following lemma. If k nu is greater or equal to 2, then weak validity in b nu v implies weak membership in the, in the dual. And that's what we need. Okay, and the proof is just you just apply these inequalities. So, so now how I show essentially as follows. So weak membership in the dual ball is weak validity, that's Yudin Nemirovsky. And weak validity in this one is weak membership in B nu, and this is, this is the stuff. And so weak membership is weak validity, so you see it's all equivalent, okay? 
So, so now the, se the next thing is I want to, to say what is Newis polynomial approximable. So this is, so I fix the, the Euclidean norm one and I take an epsilon which is positive but let's say in this interval and it's irrational. And then I say that this, this definition is for any epsilon like that and x like that, there is a polynomial time algorithm in this in this in all these quantities for approximation epsilon approximation of new x so so now i claim the following so is so these are equivalent new is polynomially approximable and weak membership is polynomial they are the same so what is sure. delta there the okay the, the, okay so the, right okay so you are right Okay, so this is a typo. You are right. It's, I'm sorry, this should be epsilon. Okay, so I changed the, that's what happens, and I change the notation, I want to keep, so this should be. <laughs> well, it's, uh, this should be N plus epsilon, plus epsilon plus K nu plus K nu, okay? Typo. Right. Okay, everything right, everything, yes, so epsilon is rational, that's, that's assumed here, this one, right? Epsi X also means... No, X, I don't assume it's rational. But then what does it mean polynomial? So the number of bits used to represent X... Okay, so may I, well, it's, uh, yes, so you, you're right, so uh, <coughs> X doesn't have to be rational, but X itself, but I think maybe it's enough, but X doesn't have to be rational. But uh, I want approximation, but now we say, how would I know? Okay, so probably I need to assume that X is rational, otherwise how would I store it, right? And also the number of bits in X should appear in this... Uh, right, 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 you are right. So, okay, so here we have something, I mean, this is, uh, okay. So we have to assume that this is right. Agree. Okay. So, uh, so let's see, so... So, uh, okay, so how do we prove that? So, so what happens is as follows, that, that uh, <coughs> so if nu is polynomial approximal, then weak membership is very easy. I just, first of all, I look at the norm of x, and if, it's, uh, if it is uh, less than one over k nu, then the norm is less, and I know it's already here. If it's greater, it's outside. So the question is, I need to see what happens if the norm x in this between two. Now I take epsilon to be that, and then I approximate, and then if x times omega y is less than k nu, then this, then it is, uh, then it is in this set, and otherwise in this set. So this is easy, and the other one also is easy. The other one is slightly more trickier. So. <coughs> So if I assume that x norm is 1, then I know that LRD by the inequalities in its, it's here. So now I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm taking, I'm taking, uh, let's say, what I'm doing here. So I'm taking delta R, uh, let's see, let's see what, how to explain it. So now assume that this is, so I want to iteration. Assume it's already, I know that this is in between two bounds. And now I'm, I'm asking, I'm taking the middle of this interval, divided it by x, and, and, and then I'm asking it's either in this set or, or if it's in this set, then I will conclude that new x is, okay, so maybe. We're just about out of time. Okay. Okay, so fine. So, so, so this is slightly tricky, but it tells me sort of I can know the uncertainty of the interval by three quarters. I repeat this procedure. So, so we are almost done. So finding an epsilon approximation to spectral norm is MP hard, but this is equivalent to weak membership in the unit ball of nuclear norm. Finding weak membership in the unit spectral in, uh, in the spectral norm is MP hard. So. So finding a uh, nuclear norm is NP hard. And so with the, the approximation, weak membership of nuclear norm is equivalent to approximation of nuclear norm, and the approximation of nuclear norm is NP hard. So I think I'm done. Okay, so I think this is enough. I 
probably that's I'm not going to go to Banach theorem. It's 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 a different topic. Further questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, the, so the nuclear norm is the dual of the spectral norm. Right. And the spectral norm you define it at the maximum over this omega. Right. Of the multilinear functional. Right. 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 Uh, and but what's about? I mean, the spectral norm you can take variations of it and not taking, for example, the two Euclidean norm, but some kind of LP norms. Yeah. Or say a different norm on the X, Y, Z, W, etc. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. A and could you get same kind of results using this kind of different, uh, slightly different spectral norm? Yes. Well, okay. So, so th there are two things here. So, I mean, so there is a abstract result here. If it's one norm is difficult to compute, that the dual is difficult to compute, right? So now the question is, is uh, suppose I modify my norms. So how do I know that at least one of those norms is hard to compute? That's I don't know. So that is the problem. So, so the, 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 the basic idea was here that, that I was, we were able to, 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 to take this particular Moskin Strauss and show that this is exactly equal to the spectral norm. And that's, that is the basis. So, so if you say, I have something different, then you have to come up, then you either to have, you have to come up with another sort of another statement. So you have to prove a certain, at once instance, at one norm that it is hard, NP hard to compute, and then how do you do it? So you, you do essentially, it's also that in Hiller Lim, but it's slightly different. You do essentially all the results that sort of I know are based on this observation. And of course, variation of this one. So therefore, I don't know what to do if I modify the norms. Yes. In, uh, in one of your slides, uh, you, if I understand, uh, you said that if the nuclear norm is one, uh, then the tensor is uh, decomposable. Right, it's, it's separable, right. No, Say no, so, so if, if I, ha I have a bipartite matrix and it's separable, so let's, let's go back. But separable is equivalent to decomposable plus uh, norm. Uh, in the decomposable, <laughs> they're all the, decomposable, but it's a sum. It's, it's not, decomposable is not only rank one, is that it just, it's a convex combination of, so oh, right, okay, so let's, uh, okay, no, it's, this is, so you, so, let's see. Let's do it, so this is, a, okay, here. You see. S M N is convex combination of this convex combination. It's not one. That's a, one. This is very easy to find, right? The what's difficult? What's difficult? Let's see. I'm all, so this to find if the vector is like that, that's easy. But the convex combination is hard. That's the whole thing. Okay. If that's the whole thing, that that's that's maybe the confusion here. So uh, other questions? Yes, sure, so, go. So the hardness results, the problem that is being considered is you have the tensor whose entries are rational numbers. Yes. It's hard to compute in the time polynomial in the sum of the n plus the right. separate number. Right, right. <coughs> yes, that's, yeah, so you are right here is sort of, you see, you see how much I know about complexity. So you are right. So in other words, the, the result is as follows. So for Moskin Strassen, the, for Moskin Strassen result, so what we say, so you, so the for Moskin Strassen, the information on is only the graph is zero, one, right? Everything. Now, then if you want to make it, to, if you, so now if you want to make it like a, a density matrix you define by the number of edges, so it's rational, right? And that's so, and then you say, if I want to compute that, then it's exactly, exactly I will compute this one minus divided by kappa nu, and that's, 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 that's the idea. But now, but now from that, I want to go to the dual norm. And for that, I need, as you said, I need now to, to do all this, that's what, what, that's what we need, and that's what essentially most of the work here, right? Well, it's, it's. it's. So, 
So just a remark. So this is uh, this paper. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, it's, it's, it's always confused. Which okay. So just it's it's if somebody wants to look on this our results. So it's on archive. So this this is the paper. So we posted. Uh, Okay, so this is, uh, we, we posted it, uh, I think, yeah, it was uh, 10, right? We posted it last month. Okay. Thank you.